What's going on everybody? This is going to be another Android Studio tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to read data from a Firebase database. So I also added an authentication section to this app so if you want to see how to authenticate users check out my other video on how to add authentication to your Firebase app. So we can see that we have two users here so I'm just going to log in with one of them. So I'm successfully signed in. Now I'm going to go to the database and we can see we've got some data here. The user that I just signed in with is this one right here. So I'm going to click on view database contents and it's going to grab the information, the name, the email, and the phone number. Now I'm going to go sign in with the other user and show you that it pulls this information. So I'm signed in with Blake. Now I'm going to go to view database contents and we can see that it pulls Blake's information. Reading from a Firebase database can be kind of tricky. There's definitely a lot of ways that you don't want to do it. So I'm going to make sure I show you the proper way making sure to not embed too many items. So first thing we'll do is create a project. I'm going to call it Firebase Read Data, as you can see from the title up here. And then I'm going to add that project to a new Firebase database, which I have here. You can see um, I have Firebase Read Data up at the top here. If you don't know how to add Firebase to your app, check out my very first video on Firebase. It's, uh, what is it? What is Firebase? And it shows you how to get started with Firebase. So I've already added Firebase to this app. First thing I'm going to do is add the internet permission because I always forget that. So in the manifest, that's done. We'll close that. Now I'm going to copy all the. I'm going to copy the layout file from my previous video on authentication, or actually it's the video on adding data to a Firebase database. So I'm just going to skip ahead here after I copy all that stuff in. First thing I did was add in the layout file. So I just copied activity main from my previous uh, tutorial on adding data to a Firebase database with the exception of this button. So I added one button down here. So now that we're done here, we can close it. Now I'm gonna copy main activity from my previous video. And of course, don't forget to add authentication and real-time database. If this is the first video you're watching, just go to tools, click on Firebase, and it opens up this helper. Go to authentication, real-time database. Click here, add authentication. Go back, add real-time database. I go over this in detail in my previous videos, so like I said before, check those out if this is the first video you're watching. Okay, now that we're in main activity and I have everything copied from my previous video, I'm going to add a video, a new button to navigate to the view database screen. Then I'm going to declare the button in the onCreate method. Then we'll scroll down and add an onClick listener to the button. And then we're just going to use an intent to start an activity to navigate to the other screen. Okay, that's all done. Now we'll create the view database class. So go up here, go new Java class import our onCreate method. Now we'll create our layout, the uh, view database layout. So we'll go over to layout, new layout. And this is just gonna be a very simple button, or sorry, very simple layout. We're just gonna have a title and a list view. Okay, done with that, we can close it. And before I forget, we're gonna add the second activity. Since we made another activity, we gotta add it to the manifest. Okay, that's done, we can close that. First thing is declare a tag. Now we'll declare all the Firebase stuff that we need. So we have our Firebase database, our Firebase authentication, Firebase authentication listener, and uh, database reference. We'll also need a string for the user ID and the list view. Now we'll declare all, all of our objects in the onCreate method. So we got our list view, our authentication, our database, uh, database reference, our and then our user ID. We get the user ID by declaring a Firebase user and then getting the user ID by calling the get UID method. Now we're going to copy a few things from main activity since they're going to be the same anyway. We're going to grab uh, our toast, our on stop, and on start. So we'll copy those, paste those down at the bottom, and we need to get our authentication listener. So we'll just grab this and paste that in on create. So now comes kind of the tricky part. Or the beginning of the tricky part. So we're gonna call we're gonna call my ref and set an on value event listener. Sorry, add value al, bleh, add value event listener. And this is gonna be called anytime there's a change made to the database or initially when you start the activity. So you don't need to worry about like that was one thing that confused me about it was I was uh, I thought it would only get called when things were added to the database or edited in the database, but this will get called as soon as the activity starts. So you don't worry, have to worry about like initiating uh, something to read the database. It will automatically do that. And then I'm going to call a method in here that we're going to use to actually read the data. I didn't make the method yet, but I'm going to call it show data. 
and we're gonna make it in a second here. So let's click here, create the method. There we go. And it can be void, we're not gonna return anything. And we're just gonna pass the data snapshot. The data snapshot will create a snapshot, just as it sounds, of the database, and then we can extract certain information from it. And if I can, so the data snapshot will take a snapshot of the entire database. So what you have to do is iterate through each item of the snapshot. So like right now, if I take a snapshot of the users part, it's gonna it's gonna have item one will be this user and item two will be this user. So what we have to do is iterate through all the users and then we, we only wanna view the data for the user that's authenticated. So that's gonna be kind of the tricky part. So we create a for loop to iterate through all the snapshots. Then we're gonna create another Java class that's gonna help us read the data from the database. I'm gonna call it user information. And just like it shows in our Firebase database, it's gonna have three parameters, the email, the name, and the phone number. So there's our email name and phone number, and we're gonna create a default constructor, an empty one. And then we're gonna declare all of our getter and setter, setter methods, and we're done. So it's probably gonna be a little confusing at first if this is your first time, but it's actually very intuitive once you get used to it. Reading data from a Firebase database is very simple, and it, and it allows you to integrate classes like these that will hold information and make it very easy to store information. So I'll show you what I mean. First we'll declare our user information object. Then we're going to set the name, the email, and the phone number from the database. So to set the name, email, and phone number, we call user uinfo, our user info object, set the name, set the email, and set the phone number. To do that, we use the data snapshot and we go to the child of the user ID here. Uh, maybe if it'll be easier if I put this up here. The data snap we go to the child of the data snapshot, which is the user ID right here. So this would be the user ID of the one that signed in, and then we get the value. So we get the val we get the value, which is every parameter underneath this child, and then we call the method get name so that it will it will only get the name, and then we do the same thing for the email and the phone number. We call get email and get phone number. Hopefully that makes sense. I think you just gotta you just gotta do it yourself, and then it will make sense. Now we're just gonna log all that information. Now we'll create our array list to store all the items because we're gonna put it into a list view. So there's our array. Now we gotta add the name, the email, and the phone number to the array. Now we create an array adapter and attach the adapter to the list view. Okay, I think I'm done. I don't think I forgot anything. Let's run it. Oh, gotta change that. Okay, so first we'll sign in with Mitch. Okay, signed in, now we'll view the database. And we can see it pulls up the correct information. Now I'll sign out and sign in with Blake. Okay, we're signing with Blake. Now we'll view the database, and we can see it pulls Blake's information. So I know, like when I was when I did this my first time, it was kind of confusing. But after the first time, and after seeing it done yourself, it makes a lot of sense. It's, it's really easy to read data and organize data. Just give it a try yourself, and I'm sure it will make a lot more sense. Uh, one thing I forgot to do was go over the the rules that I have. Um, this video is not on rules, so I'm not going to go over it in detail, but basically the rules that I have here are just read and write if authentication isn't null. So if a user is signed in, that means they're authenticated. So you'd have read and write access as long as you're authenticated. So that's it for this video. I hope that it was helpful. Uh, I know Firebase databases can be kind of confusing. I'm definitely going to make more on them in the future. I'm probably going to make one on just like database structure because I think that that would be very useful. There's definitely a lot of things you don't want to do with a Firebase database. So if this video was helpful, don't forget to leave a like. I'm trying to grow my channel. I really enjoy making videos. So if you know anybody that might benefit from seeing my videos, don't forget to share them. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.